Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ether Hub. I am of course Simon here bringing you the lore of Magic the Gathering. Guys, I gotta be honest with you, these spoilers for Ravnica Allegiance has got me thinking a lot about what's going to happen in the story and I just can't stay away. It may be early, but let's get into more Ravnica Allegiance stuff. It's just so very juicy. For example, we just saw a new preview for Lavinia, Azorius Renegade, and this is big, big news. However, before we get into speculation, in this video, I want to go over the story so far for Lavinia and follow that up with another video on how this story could impact her future lore in Ravnica Allegiance. But you know, like any good student, we need this background information first for context. But let's make this a part of the 25 Cards of Christmas series. I know I'm slacking a little bit, but hey, any uh, number of card giveaways during the month of December ain't too bad either. So that means stick around till the end, get a chance to win a card of Lavinia's. Just make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and follow the Gleam link in the video's description below. Of course, big shout out to all the patrons of the channel. The Vorthos Army is directly responsible for bringing this series to the channel. Okay, so Lavinia is a classic officer of the Azorius Senate. An arrester, actually, so more like a police officer. They're the ones detaining everyone with them big blue magical handcuffs. Basically the chief annoyance for every aggro player in Magic. Yeah, that's the arresters. Anyway, she's been in service of the Azorius for years now. Incoming tragic origin story, ever since her brother, who was also an arrester, died protecting her from Demir and Rakdos agents. She joined the Azorius basically just to hunt these murderers down and kill them. And kill them she did, staying on as a loyal member of the Azorius. As an officer of the 10th district on Ravnica, Lavinia first really appeared in the lore as her guildmaster, the Sphinx, Esperia, ordered an investigation into a random burned down building in the city. It seemed like your run of the mill arson, maybe a loose Rakdos devil was the culprit. Yet, as Lavinia searched, she found signs of a conspiracy. Not conspiracy for a crown, but something similar. There were notes, maps, glyphs, mentioning something known as the Implicit Maze, whatever that was. Regardless, this wasn't simply an arson, but actually a cover-up, and Lavinia's inquisitive nature begged her to dig deeper. She found that the home belonged to a telepath, Jace Balaran, who went to extreme lengths to prevent this findings from ending up in the hands of the Demir. After writing her initial report to ask for more resources, Esperia deemed that little interest was had in the case and Lavinia was stationed in a random light crime district, basically through actions told to let it go, which was really, really hard for her, even causing her to think about disobeying orders and going rogue. However, her loyalty won out, yet instead of throwing in the towel, she discreetly gathered information from other sources on this implicit maze. With new information on the maze and the Izzet's grand announcement to have each of the guilds run it, presented by none other than Niv Mizzet himself, Lavinia again appealed to her guildmaster Esperia. Though the investigation was now a moot point, Esperia trusted the insider knowledge Lavinia had obtained on the maze and made her the Azorius champion and runner of the maze. This was a great opportunity for Lavinia because she had discovered that the Azorius Paran, Azor, was in fact the one who created the maze and the Supreme Verdict, the destructive force that could very well end all of Ravnica, and she was very interested in learning the why behind this action. One of the craziest things to happen during the running of the Implicit Maze was Jace actually being arrested by Lavinia for his previous crimes, you know, burning down his own house, I guess. Sure, why not? Lock a man away for burning down his own house. Anyway, he was summoned to stand trial in front of Asperia, who found him guilty, but only sentenced the telepath to community service. That service being unique in that he was charged with ensuring that the guild champions finished the running of the maze, as to not set off the supreme verdict as they still weren't 100% sure what the hell that actually meant. Easy enough, Jace was released and went back to the maze. So you can say without Lavinia and Asperia and the Azorius here, the ending of Dragon's Maze could have been a lot more explosive. And you know how this story ends. The maze is completed, everyone starts fighting, the construct of Azor determines that the guild's conflict cannot be resolved and the supreme verdict is almost cast. Until Jace saves the day. Using his telepathy powers, he peers into the minds of all the guild runners and merges them, seeing them all as individual ideals and as a collective thought. Basically, he becomes the whole of Ravnica, 
meeting this peace, the power of Azor is ended and Jace is made the Living Guild Pact. A powerful magic which allows Jace to be the ultimate authority on Ravnica. His magic can settle disputes between guilds and enforce peace on the plane. That is, if he ever hangs around long enough to actually do his job. Jace likes to travel. Being a planeswalker and a goody-goody, he can never seem to settle down. He tries to set up a council of the guild pack to help him govern, especially while he's away, but it's ultimately unsuccessful. He did, however, enlist the help of one who once arrested him, Lavinia, who was suspicious but took the job, if nothing else, to just keep an eye on Jace. Lavinia became the deputy of the Guild Pact, setting his appointments and protecting him from threats, as well as forcing Jace to do his damn job every once in a while. She was like his rock, bringing him back down to Ravnica. She would eventually learn of his planeswalking traits, learning why he seemingly disappeared from Ravnica for months at a time. During his trips to Zendikar to kill the Eldrazi, or Innistrad to also kill an Eldrazi, Lavinia kept the peace in his absence, but has since ordered him to stay on Ravnica for the sake of Ravnica. Of course, this didn't stop him from going to Amonkhet, losing his memory and being stranded on Ixalan, but hey, what are you gonna do? She did, however, allow the Gatewatch to use the Sanctum of the Guild Pact as their meeting hall. So that's a step in the right direction. So where does this history on Lavinia leave us? Well, we have a strict Azorius officer with knowledge of Planeswalkers working closely and forming a relationship with the living Guild Pact himself, Jace, who is a devout member of the Gatewatch, fighting against Bolas, who's coming to Ravnica to destroy it all. Yeah, that about sums it up. Lavinia, even going into Ravnica Allegiance, will be an ally of Jace despite her own guild, switching hands and falling under the whims of Bolas. But that's all information for another video. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed this background story on Lavinia, along with the preview of her new card, Lavinia Azorius Renegade, remember to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and of course share it across the multiverse. A big shout out to all of our supporters on Patreon, joining the Vorthos army gives you loads of exclusive perks, and most of all, you support the best Vorthos channel on YouTube. So thank you so much, and please, check that link in the description below. Remember to also follow the Gleam link in the video description to enter for your chance to win Lavinia in all her glory. As always guys, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time here on the Ether Hub. Thanks so much for watching our latest video here on the Ether Hub. Our channel only exists thanks to fans like you and those who've joined the Vorthos Army over in Patreon. Many thanks to our latest supporters, David Coulterman, Peter Jadlrab, Anton Thorne, Daniel Vincent, and Marcirio Pajeo. Welcome to the Vorthos Army! The same goes for all of the lore legends that you see in the credits, the supporters who make this channel possible. As always, thanks so much for watching today. I'm Carolyn Page, and you are the Vorthos Army.